Next, we talk about the architecture of MongoDB a little bit. First of all, there is the concept of replica sets in MongoDB to make sure that fault tolerance is provided. So MongoDB talks about shards, which you can think of as a single MongoDB server, which runs the software to provide a storage space. But if you want to have fault tolerance, well, this kind of a shard that should store some kind of data must replicate the data internally across servers. So a shard can be a single server or it can be a set of servers that is responsible for a, a couple of data that you want to store into it. Okay, now if we have a replica set, so multiple MongoDB servers that work together to store a set of data, they implement a master-slave replication and provide means for failover. So in this image we see shards which store parts of the data. So here we store a part of the data and here we store a part of the data. We also have configuration servers that provide information about the replica sets and information about how our cluster is basically laid out. Then we have application servers which run potentially um, router services, Mongo S, that allow you the connection between clients and replica sets. So it's kind of a tiered architecture. You can think of the client would be here on top, then communicates with the Mongo S, talks to the shard, which contains a replica set, and a replica set runs Mongo S, uh, sorry, Mongo D, which is the Mongo um, shard server, providing the storage space. Also, they have a balancer that migrates status between the servers, so you can migrate it between different shards to balance it. So the way sharding works is that it is set on the collection level. Here we have again, when you do reads writes on the application side, you talk to the Mongo S router, which then redirects it to different shards. And you can have a shard that stores a certain collection. So a certain collection can live in only one shard, but it can also span multiple shards. So here's an interesting point why I actually chose MongoDB as an example. The question is always how can we distribute our information, our, our keys with the data across the available servers. So in MongoDB we have a shard key which is a immutable field that it must be stored in every collection document. And based on this field, it could be for example our ID, naturally our ID field. Based on this we have to decide which server is responsible for storing the data. So you, it, this is really highly performance relevant because you want to make sure that the keys are well balanced across all the servers. Now MongoDB talks about chunks. So a chunk is a continuous range of shard key values. For example, key zero, let's say until key 100,000 should be stored in this chunk. 100,000, to 200,000 is this chunk, and so on and so forth. This gives you a way to partition the data, and in particular, the key space should be partitioned this way. You can compare this with our hashing that we, algorithms that we learned um, two weeks ago, which uh, made sure to work on the ring of data, here we, we have um, another alternative to statically assign basically responsibilities from keys to servers. So internally, when you have a query, how does it work? Well, you always need to contact the server that has the data. But if you run, for example, a find operation or you query for data with certain properties, you must figure out which of the servers and in which of these chunks basically are with re relevant keys and relevant documents ultimately. So if the shard key is part of the query, we have it very easy. So if we know, for example, users are searching for ID between 10 and 100,000, okay, we know from our ID we can use this hash function to directly determine the chunk of um, the, the, the key, right? So on which server is it placed? 
but if the shard key is not part of the query, we must broadcast the query. And so we, we send the same query to all the servers and they will have to figure out who has the data. That also imposes some limitations when you do a find operation because it must be processed by all of them. The good thing is that the request is parallel executed by all of the servers. Here is the other example, right, where we have a minimum key and a maximum key, and then we have somehow partitioned this key space into chunks. So zones are an additional idea on top. Uh, the idea is that you want to improve the locality of data. For KQA, when you have multiple data centers, you want to make sure that a local data center stores the data by default. And the, the document that um, has a makes a decision where it shall be stored, again based on the shard key. And then you can create tags. This is rather elaborate. It's just important to remember that you can define the zones for a key. So here we define zone A from key 1 to 10 and B from 10 to 20. And then we have some zones where, where, the, where data needs to be stored in zone A and B. Sometimes it is stored um, by default in neither. So here, and this decision then um, identifies the location. And with the location, we ultimately have basically the shards, right, which are the Mongo servers locally then where we want to store our data.